bigger than that. What? No. Can you tell me what the temperature is on the on the Did you hear me yet? No, I didn't. I thought you saw me. You... I waved, but I didn't hear you. No, there's there's a bit of an acoustic barrier there because of the the valley of the of the trail. The sound just gets lost in there. Can you tell me what the temperature says there? Eight Celsius. Oh, eight. And what about Fahrenheit? It's 46 Fahrenheit. Oh, good. I just couldn't quite see it. That's how bad my eyesight is. Well, I can't ask. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I was waiting for you to get here to give me the, uh, the official temperature. All right. What, you thought you saw something you knew? No, there's double check. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes six can look like an eight. Better turn the music down a bit, eh? All right, are you ready? I'm gonna go to my place. Comfort zone. What I did today was I photographed the bus timetable for that bus stop. And, uh, there's a bus at 9.22, I think, and another one at 9.35. Yeah. So if we don't get the 9.22, you'll be able to get the 9.35. Hang on a sec. Hold this, will you? I'm uh, just going to turn the music off because... I got a feeling in a minute there's a guy going to start talking. You know, the DJ's going to start talking and I don't really need... The DJ talking? No, not while we're trying to chat. No. All right. Yes. Hang on. I got the auto pause on, so it doesn't matter if we stop it all. Okay, let's go. Workout resume. There we go. That run I did on a cruise ship. Yeah. Oh, you did, eh? You sounded pretty excited. Yes, sir. Yeah, you were giggling away. I bet there were a lot of Filipinos on the bus, on the boat. No. No? I thought most of the crew on those ships were Filipino. Yeah. There was huh? more of a mix. There was a mixture. Yeah. Were they Americans? Uh, yeah. What was the uh, make of the ship? Was it Norwegian? Uh, Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean. Who owns them? Um, I think one of um, well, Donald Trump? No. <laughs> I don't know who owns them, but I know, I know the godmother of them. The godmother of the... She's an actress. Oh, yeah. She's probably personally owned them. Yesterday worked out so well for me. You know, when I left you, I cycled back up onto uh, Jacqueline Road. A galloping goose? Yeah, I, I took the galloping goose back. And did you find out what that place that we got off? Yeah. We turned off Millstream when we saw the railway line, but we should have stayed on Millstream. But uh, coming back, I just stayed on the goose. The minute I went up Jacklin, and when it crossed the goose, I just got on the goose and cycled all the way back to uh, Royal Roads. And then I made a video, and uh, then I got the bus back from Royal Roads, the 39, which took me, as you know, right to the end of my street, San Juan. And you know, by the time I packed my camera and my helmet in the backpack of my bicycle, about one second later the bus arrived. I loaded the bus, the bike on the bus, and uh, boom, I was home by noon. Do you know if Godmother means owner? Uh, no. Originally, godparents were supposed to be uh, the... Guardi not the guardians, but the people who are supposed to make sure that the child has a belief in God. So protect the uh, 
religious um, ideas in the child. What does it mean for a preacher? I'm not sure. Probably somebody who's a spiritual um, mentor, somebody who makes sure that everybody is safe and that the devil doesn't get to them. On the cruise ship? Yeah. What? Mind you, the devil got to you. Had your seizure. Your seizure. In the old days, they used to think seizures were an act of the devil or witchcraft. Okay. Bicycle behind. I wonder if we'll see that guy again. <laughs> it was just about here, wasn't it? On your left. Thank you. We saw these guys before. Yep. They meet up at the uh, drinking fountain and then they go out and back. I think these were the guys that fell over that one time we saw one guy fall down. It's the same group. There's four or five old guys. Whoop. I can't believe how warm it is today. And it's going to get sunnier. You see how the clouds are clearing over there? You know your work. How many people work there? Um, just 25. 25, eh? Not that many. And what do most of them do? Actually, I think there's only 10. Yeah. Because, uh, they work shifts? The rest are truckers. Ah, uh, I see. So the truckers don't really count. No. Because they're really not there. So what is it? A warehouse for frozen food? Um, well, frozen and refrigerated. Yeah. So the truckers go there, load up, yeah. and then they take the stuff to the supermarkets. Yeah. We even uh, see sometimes uh, dead pigs. Really? And dead deer. Well, not deer, um, man. What do you mean? With fur on or ready for butchery? Uh, ready for butchery. Yeah, okay. So you have whole sides of, of, of animals. I used to work in a kitchen once that they used to have delivered half a, half a cow. A side of beef, as they call it. And one of the guys, his job was to carry the side of beef up into the kitchen, take off the legs, and then take out the sirloin steaks, the filet mignon. He used to do all the butchery. You did? No, I didn't. That's a, a specific job. He was the head chef's first commie. Yeah. Well, I she was snoozing, and when I spoke to you, she woke up. Hello. You know how all these people are talking on their phone while they're walking around. I mean, when I'm recording my show. They shouldn't feel like it's anything particularly strange. They're doing the same thing, really. But they're just talking to an audience of one. This is really your comfort zone, isn't it? I guess you don't want to get sweaty, eh? That too. Yeah. If you're going to run continuously, 
without doing walk breaks. You might as well just stay at a comfortable pace. Walk breaks? Walk breaks, yeah. I never got taught walk breaks. Walk breaks? Yeah. Not officially, no. We never really worked with a timer, you and me. Well, that, that was good that we did um, do walk breaks because they got me more endurance. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. But a lot of people, they want to get faster, so they do walk breaks so that they can sprint oh, intervals. and then walk. Sprint and then walk, yeah. But it doesn't really help their endurance. You're right there. Well, when every time Brent um, walked, I was like, oh, great. Yeah, well, Brent was quite a heavy guy. You know, he had a lot of extra weight to carry. And uh, I guess he was taught to walk with brakes. I mean, to run with brakes. Why does Graham walk? Graham doesn't walk very much. No, nope. he only walks like when you... If we have to stop for him to take his gloves off, we'll walk a little bit. Or if there's a steep hill, he'll walk on the hill. Hi. Because he doesn't want to strain him, his heart too much. After we get through the second tunnel, we have to go to the right. Ooh, didn't hear her coming. Some of these bikes are so well maintained that they're all, almost silent. Yeah. Stealth mode, yeah. Our bikes are kind of squeaky. But I was quite pleased with our ride. I thought we did pretty good. What was 30k? Uh, it was 30k by the time I was finished, yeah. If you'd cycled home, it would have been 30k. Oh, minus 15k? 15, yeah. Because when I got to you, it said 5k. And then when we got to your work, it said 20k. So that means you rode 15. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, the closer we get to town, the more industrial smells we get. Paint shops, more cigarette smoke. Graham notices things like that a lot. Every time he smells people smoking pot, he says, Oh, they're smoking pot again. Yeah. He's like you. Yeah. I, I, I like pot yeah. Wonder what he thinks about Trudeau. Yeah. Hey! Hi there. That's a guy called Robin. He's a really good runner. He only races one race a year. What? Yeah. And that's the only one he ever enters. The Gunner Shaw, the one you did. It's going to get a little bit noisy now because we're going to be by the highway, but can't really be helped. I can't wait for these self-driving cars to be available on the market. The Google cars, the ones that are, uh, they drive by uh, GPS. Then anybody can have a car. Even if you're blind, Graham could have a car. It's not really not the same feel. Maybe not. There were people in, uh, in California where they've been doing tests with the automatic self-driving car 
and they say that it's kind of annoying when you get stuck behind one of these cars because they drive super carefully very very safe driving it's so boring yeah. They never break the speed limit. They never take any unnecessary risks. The only trouble is with those automatic cars. I'm calling them automatic cars, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Robot cars. Is they don't know the difference between a paper shopping bag and a brick. If they see something in the road, they'll slow down and stop, even though a, reg a normal driver would say, oh, it's just a paper bag, and drive straight across it. Well, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to use their camera and see there's an obstacle. Oh, wait, so they're going to stop in the middle of the highway? Every paper bag. Oh, <laughs> well, they're going to make mistakes, but they're always going to be on the side of safety. Somebody might bump into them. Yeah. For no for no reason, yeah. I think they should call them robot driven cars. Well they should make a rule. Don't get them to drive on the mountain. Well they might make them only uh, usable on you know, domestic local streets. Hi. Mind you, the reason that a lot of people are interested in those robot-driven cars is that they're safer. There'll be less people killed on the road. That's, you know, that's almost... That's their main concern. Yeah. If it's just about safety, then everybody should have automatically driven cars. But there's other situations, like, what if you're driving down through a tunnel? Would they lose their signal? Would they suddenly crash once you got into a tunnel? It's hard to say. Well, if it's GPS, the GPS, the tunnel should be on the GPS. Well, it should be on the map, yeah. But I don't think they'll be getting a signal. something you don't see too often. A black guy on a bicycle. In Victoria, that is. I noticed in Montreal there's many, many more black people than here. Here we get more East Indians and Chinese. You were going to say that, weren't you? and native people as well. So this is your first option, is to stop here on the corner of Tillicum and wait for the bus. But we've got to go a little further to Mackenzie. By the time I get back, I would have run about 10 miles. because uh, I think Mackenzie is eight kilometers from my house and eight kilometers is five miles. But you know, if this works out okay for you, there's no reason why we can't do this kind of run again. Run to the bus stop, you go to work. And at the telecom stop? How many kids is that? For you? Yeah. Two? What? Yeah! Get it. Go to Mackenzie. Yeah. 
we still got the light. And it's downhill, this part, which is good. So real time is 9.21. Hi. Buddy. Buddy. Oh, he's been sitting here, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, well, because he was in his riding gear. And here are the old guys again. Yeah, they were the same guys. No? Well, they look like them. Hi. This is where you would have turned off if you were going to Montana's. So the weather is clearing. Derek is dropping back a little bit, but I suspect it's because he doesn't want to get too sweaty. Do you want me to wait for you, Derek? Huh? Do you want me to slow down a bit? <laughs> Are there any girls working in your place? In the office or in the in the warehouse? Uh -huh. It goes to show how your imagination gets carried away. Well, when you first said that you were working at uh, a refrigeration place, I thought you were selling fridges. There goes the, the 925 bus. No, no. <laughs> you got the 938 to catch. But it's bang on time. If you'd waited at Tilikum, you would have got that bus. Yeah, that's not really very much of a run. Well, on Sunday I'm leaving for Spain. Well, for England. getting kind of excited about it. What? On the plane? Yeah, I think so. What can I do with the old suit? Well, I think the, the plane I'm going to be flying in is one of the modern ones. They have on the back of the seat in front, they have a screen. In the old days, they used to have a, a screen that came down from the, above the aisle. I'm gonna have to take probably one or two ibuprofen for the flight because 
it starts to hurt after about two or three hours of sitting still. And if I took a painkiller, it'll probably mean I'm going to sit more comfortably. I don't normally take painkillers. See where those cars are? That's where you stop. And unless there's a bus coming, you don't really have to speed up. There's a bus coming. There is? No, no, there is. Yeah. I just keep running. <laughs> you'll, you'll be in Colwood before you know it. What? You'll be in Colwood before you know it. But from here to your place, to your work, is about uh, 45 minutes on the bus. So you don't really want to miss it. If you miss the bus, you might be late for work. I thought that was the bus. Every time I hear a diesel. We made it! You see, this person's waiting for the bus. Not in service. That's lucky. It's about 3K? Uh, it's about 4K for you. To here. No, I think 8 and uh, 5. 3K. When's the next bus out from here? I'm just going to tell you. I, ha I took a picture of the uh, schedule so that I could show you. By the time I get the picture, the, the bus will be right here. Okay. Hang on. Let's see. Nine thirty-five. You see, nine twenty. That was the one that went by. Nine thirty-five, nine fifty. So even if you missed the nine twenty, you could probably still get to work on time. Where's the next bus stop? Uh, the next bus stop from here is probably the, the hospital, which is quite a long way. I could find out because another time we do it, we might be able to get to the next bus stop in time to make your run a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. Well, it's up to you. The other thing is that I think I'm leaving for uh, England on Sunday in the afternoon. I'm not sure about that. But uh, we might be able to run again on Saturday. Because you're off on Saturday, aren't you? Okay. Well, I'm going to head back now. And there's that picture of me and Graham. Oh. He's a gasping for breath. He does look a little bit uh, as if he's gasping for breath. He said he was... Uh, he was puffing and panting, yeah. But it's a good picture. One of my friends took that. It wasn't a selfie. You'd have to have a very long stick for that to, for, the, for me to have, to have taken that picture. Anyway, I'm going to head back now. Did he know his uh, picture was on the in the paper? I sent it to him. I sent him the picture. You 
heads in the picture. Yeah. Pretty, uh... Oh, he wouldn't have been able to see it, but Chris, his wife, would have seen it. Okay, so it's 9.30. The bus will be along in uh, five minutes. Did he know his picture was on Times columnist? Oh, yeah, he knew that because he was there for the interview. They interviewed us for that one. All right, so uh, I'll be in touch about Saturday, all right? And we could probably go across the switchbridge into town and back again. Okay. All right? Okay. You have a good day at work. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is the running juckle having escorted his friend Derek to the bus stop so that he can go to work. Signing off for the Wednesday show. Sorry about the traffic noise. Can't be helped. Bye-bye.